and his name is, wait, I feel sorry, you should be in this with me. Okay, I'm gonna come on your level. Hey guys, Molly from the future. I am home, back in my apartment, with my new guide dog, who you are all about to officially meet, and I can't wait, because I know you are just gonna fall in love with my furry friend the way I have. As a blind person, there are a few things that make me feel more confident, more capable, more independent, safer, and one of those things is my guide dog, and this pup has certainly done that for me and more. I feel so much more confident back at home going out and doing things on my own again with this dog by my side. Of course, with my cane, I was still doing things on my own, but this, having this dog back, makes me feel just like that much more safe and comfortable being independent and going out and doing things on my own. And I feel like I can do more than I've done in a long time. So I'm really excited. And I thank you guys all for being on this journey with me. And I also wanna thank CVS for sponsoring this video because the other thing that makes my life so much easier as a blind person is technology. And CVS has harnessed the power of technology to create an in-app reader for prescriptions called Spoken RX. CVS worked with the American Council of the Blind to make sure that blind people actually had a say in what's helpful, what's useful for us, which I really appreciate. And it really is an amazing tool that gives me all the information I need on my prescription bottle. Using Spoken RX, I can now independently read the patient name, the medication name, dosage, and directions, and it can be read in both English and Spanish. All CVS pharmacy locations are now equipped to affix an FRID sticker to the bottom of any of their prescription pill bottles, and you can register either on the phone or in your pharmacy. Now I'm just gonna show you how it's done. So I've opened my CVS pharmacy app on my phone. I'm gonna move my finger around on the screen until I find Spoken RX. So now I'm just gonna take the sticker on the bottom, the RFID sticker, and put it under the camera. Prescription information. CVS. Prescription information. Heading. And now the prescription information has come up. Dose. Prescription amoxicillin. Prescription amoxicillin 500 milligrams capsule. Dosage capsule. Directions take one capsule by mouth three times a day. And it's read me all the information I need to know. Disclaimer, this is not actually my prescription. This is just an example bottle. Um, but I think this is so awesome. It's another thing that makes me feel capable, independent, and safe. Like I can keep my private information personal and private to just me. This is a great tool for the blind and visually impaired or just for anybody who has trouble reading the usual print that is very small, I've heard, on pill bottles. Now, let's go meet the pup. Hello, everyone. So we just did our drill. Um, we were just practicing curbs and crossings and um, getting Mr. Speed up when he's doing his walking across the street. Um, all went very well and I will be keeping him. He is mine. In fact, they, they said at one point, they were like, he loves you so much already. And I said, I love him too. And they said, we can, we can feel it from over here. <laughs> so I think the fact that he's so like Gallup has allowed us to bond really well because he feels like I'm with Gallup um, and in ways he feels like I'm with Gypsy like he wags his tail a lot more than Gallup which is very Gypsy she literally never stopped wagging her tail it was almost a problem he is a little more into toys Gallup really didn't care for most of his life about toys or other dogs this dude is very good at no dog distractions so good with dog distractions, just like Gallup, which is really awesome, because that can be a real tricky one for a lot of users, is dog distraction. He has no dog distraction. Because he is a foodie, I'll be interested to see when we do food distraction tests how he does, but um, so far with just like food on the table and eating around him, he has no problems, which is great. He does like to jump and eat flies in the room, which is very Gypsy. Uh, he's the same size as Gypsy, so when I hug him, he feels like it's Gypsy. Uh, I do let him sleep on the bed. I told the trainers, I was like, look, it's not gonna happen. He's a bed sleeper, and because he's such a good dog, and I, when I say down, he immediately gets down, and he doesn't get up unless I tell him he can get up, we've decided it's, it's okay. That's usually not how it goes with guide dogs in the guide dog program, but just because of who he is and because of like the way we're bonding and because he doesn't get up without me telling him he can and he <laughs> what you doing you getting hot and he doesn't uh hey okay 
and uh, he gets down as soon as I tell him to. You know, we're making an allowance. So that's that. We've been snuggling together all night, every night, and I think that has also helped us bond. He's just such a good guy. He, I love that he has elements of both Gypsy and Gallop, which is exactly what I was looking for. And I couldn't be happier with him. And I got a boy. So for all those who voted girl, which was most of you, I am sorry, I did get a new boy. And I'm happy because you guys know that I did want a boy. So I'm really pleased with him. And uh, name reveal coming today. And I will tell you guys his name after I find out his whole history. Today they go through, once they've confirmed it is your dog, um, they go through um, what the litter theme was, what the uh, like what their siblings are. He actually has a sibling in the class. Um, they go through the birthday, birth parents, puppy raisers. You kind of just get all their history and info. So if you guys want like photos of um, Gigi and her parents and updates on Gigi, if you want photos of this dude's parents and everything, you're just gonna wanna follow at Molly's Guide Dogs because uh, on Instagram, because that's where I'm gonna put that kind of updates and stuff. So yeah, that's that. I am so hungry and thankfully it's almost lunch. Being back at Vera, obviously I have so many memories flushing back to me. Like yesterday when we were in the downtown area for the first time again, um, the cafe they sat us at was the cafe I cried and called my parents and told them to come pick me up when <laughs> I got Gallup. I'll never forget that. Um, I sat outside there and cried and called them and said, I'm leaving. Um, so just so many memories and I can remember being 13 and coming in March over my spring break at school um, and coming to do my evaluation, my assessment to see if I would be able to receive a dog at 13 um, and you know, very strict it's really hard to get approved for a dog that young um, so I was really nervous and I had to work really hard and some of the things they had us do was memorize very long very complicated walking routes and I had to memorize it all the night before and they gave me this tactile map to do so so this is made of wood and it has all the street names written in Braille although you have to remember all of the street names are French and I only know English so I literally had to memorize French words that I had never heard before in a neighborhood I had never been to before. And it was, I'm telling you, a very long route, like probably an hour of walking at least. And I just had one evening to memorize it. And the next morning I had to do it with my cane at 13 years old. I was allowed to ask for help if I needed it, but not from the trainers. I had to rely on the public because they wanted to see me in an environment that I would be put in with my guide dog where I wouldn't know anybody and if I needed help and there wasn't anybody there I had to find it so I wasn't allowed to rely on the trainers or the O&M instructor. There was both a guide dog trainer and an orientation and mobility instructor who did the whole evaluation, multi-day evaluation and um, yeah it was it was a wild experience. I <laughs> didn't come across any English speakers so I did it all on my own and I can still remember them like coming into my room uh, on the final morning and they specifically said well we're excited to tell you you passed with flying colors and it was like the most exciting feeling and when I came and I stayed for that month uh, the whole month of July and I spent the whole month of August learning contracted braille or grade 2 braille it's a very blind summer for me <laughs> but all of July I came and I lived here I was the youngest by 10 years I was the only person who spoke English in the class, obviously the trainer spoke English, um, but I was the only English speaking student. Uh, there was only one other person who was like not from France. All the other students were there from France. Um, I was actively losing most of my vision. I was eight hours away from home. I did not have a phone. I did not have a computer. I had an iPod, but they didn't have voiceover yet. Voiceover didn't exist yet. I'm aging myself, I know. And so I had an iPod where I would just spin the wheel and click and hope I got a song I wanted to listen to. And I had a Daisy player or a Victor reader, goes by two different names, which was a big machine that played audiobooks on CD. And I went to the library and I got a couple CDs, all they had in audiobooks. And I listened to those and that was all I had. And it really helped me bond with my guide dog because Gypsy was all I had. I was incredibly alone. I was stressed, I was overwhelmed, I was exhausted, and I would go to bed every night at 6.30 and wake up at 6.30 a.m. for breakfast. 
um, which is served at 7.30 a.m. But you have to feed your dog, get the dog out to the bathroom, get ready for the day, yada, 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 pack your bag. That was what it was like. And when I look back at doing that at 13, learning how to use a dog for the first time ever, learning all these French commands, all these hand gestures, I'm so proud of myself because I don't know how that girl did it. I was very strong to get through this. This is not an easy task. If you are going to go get your first guide dog, just know that if you feel stressed, if you feel overwhelmed, if you feel exhausted, okay. I think we should go to the other room and finish <laughs> off. Excuse me. I'm back in my room now with my buddy. Um, I was just giving him a break, um, spend some time alone because he was very tired. So he just took a little nap and I'm back with him now. So yeah, if you, if you feel overwhelmed, um, and exhausted if you're getting your second dog and you feel emotionally overwhelmed and drained like those feelings are completely normal um even this week like the last two nights i'm going to sleep at nine o'clock like i'm in bed at eight and i'm going to sleep at nine it's exhausting i'm tired every day but it's also so worth it you know you just gotta you just gotta push through I just realized that we haven't done a proper face reveal of this man so before the name reveal comes Let's look at his face. He's been outside working and it's a hot day, so he's had plenty of water, but I think he's just kind of panting a bit because he's hot. He is a short-haired, all-black dog. He is a Labernese, but I don't know who the percentage. I will find out later what the breakdown of Lab to Bernese is. He is Gypsy's size, about 65 pounds-ish, I would guess. Um, so he's about three inches shorter than Gallup though he looks very similar to Gallup without Gallup's white spots and has two canines. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Gallup was missing one of his canines and he had a little white on his chest, his chin and his back paws. This dude has none of that. Um, he has a bit of a fluffier tail than a traditional lab would and he has kind of wavy hair in some areas. And shiny. And very, very shiny. I would say the average person would assume he is a purebred black lab but I'd say if you stuck him next to a Bernese Mountain Dog, you might see it in some of the face shape. Like Gallup, for example, his face shape was very Bernese Mountain Dog, and this dude has the same face as Gallup. It's wild, even though he's much smaller than him, apparently I'm told he looks just like him, minus the white. But yeah, he's a, he's a handsome dude. It's, it's so fun. He has like such qualities of Gypsy and Gallup, and I feel like I have like... I feel like I have them both with me. When I hug him, he feels like Gypsy, that's for sure. I'll show you some stuff. We have his um, water bowl over there, which I also use for his food, which is kept in the hallway. And then we have his bed over there. And is his toy with his bed? Yes. And Except it's, you know, just at the edge of the bed. Yeah, he has his toy. But I've taught him bedtime, so let's try it. Bedtime. Oui. Bon chien. Bon chien. Do you guys see that? How good was that? He looks so like Gallup right now. <laughs> All I had to say is bedtime and point. Well, there he goes. goes. So good. He's such a quick learner. He really is such a quick learner. Like I said, he knows down from the bed. He knows home for this door at my dorm and he knows bed. And I've just taught him all of those in the last like two days. Pretty amazing. So you keep hearing me talk about how great the food is and the chef Felix. So I asked him if he'd be in the video and he would. Hi, nice to meet you everyone. Here he is. I love the name Felix, by the way. Oh, thanks. I think it's a great name. You're a great cook. <laughs> thanks so much, it's Felix. Very nice. Thanks, thanks okay. Felix. There's food. Okay, there's a rice and bean salad. There is a croque monsieur with pulled pork. And there is a sweet potato and tarragon soup. You guys, are you kidding me? Okay. Hello, we are back from our afternoon walk in town, and I have Jen here, my trainer. You've probably seen her in videos, but I haven't formally introduced her. She's one of the trainers that's working with us, and she has all of my dogs. They don't know his name yet. Okay. You know, it's a boy, but they don't know his name yet. She has all of my dog's info, parents, siblings' names, all of that fun stuff, his birthday. So I'm really excited to find out about him, and I am going to try to get photos of his parents. So you're going to have to follow the guide dog Instagram account. Oh, oh no! <laughs> <laughs> like, well, I, you mean, were I was like trying not to make it so, but now I have to keep it because it's the same. Uh... Jen's mask broke. Fun times in 2021, uh, but we're back. Okay. Oh, so so you have to give me the info, <laughs> give me the dates. You know, I've been waiting for this. Yeah. So your dog's name is. His theme is beer. Okay. 
and uh, his dad was Perlin. What? Perlin? Uh, Perlin? I don't know. Perlin? 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 P E R L I N? Perlin? Perlin? Yes, Perlin. Like Berlin. But with a P. Perlin? Perlin. Yeah. Okay. And mom is. Or Merlin. Merlin? Yeah, but a P. Perlin. Oh, Perlin. And his mom is easier. It's Corona? Corona! Oh my god! <laughs> and you know how the mom. <laughs> <laughs> because the mom gives the, the theme, so she's got a oh, beer, beer name. I am okay. so glad I didn't get a dog named Corona in 2021. Could you imagine walking around Corona? <laughs> and in the same letter, she gave birth to nine puppies. Wow. That poor woman. Siblings were named Ambré, Archibald, Beck. Archibald. Archibald. Grisou, Leon, Pietra, Sapporo, and Stella. I knew there had to Stella be a Archibald. Stella. <laughs> I knew there had to be a Stella. Oh, and what, what, what breeds were his mom and dad? Uh, probably Corona Labernese. And Perlin was a, let me check, uh, Saint Pierre. Really? Yes. So is he like 50% burner, 50% labish? Uh, more likely 25% lab and 75% Bernese because wow. the same, yeah. Wow, yeah. you wouldn't think because he's so lab-like. Yeah. Well, in the same litter you can have, you know, like short black hair, long blonde hair. So it all depends. On the ge genetics. Yeah, what comes through. Mm -hmm. That is so interesting. Mm -hmm. Wow. I love learning this stuff. And what's his birthday? He's a bit his older. Because he was, you know, his training was halted due to COVID. Well, actually, it wasn't halted due to COVID. But yeah. he was, you know, held back a bit. Yeah. So he was born on the 10th of June of 2018. June 10th, 2018. 2018 to 2019 to 2020 to so he's just over three years old yes. so he's like heading to three and a half yes so june 10th okay we've got to put that in the calendar everyone Yay. june 10th well thanks you're very welcome all right so now we know all of his info his background yes he is um three almost three and a half he'll be three and a half in uh december which is way older than they usually graduate a dog but let me tell you what else I learned about mister today he's had quite a past poor thing so I'm so glad that I can be his forever home and I like to think that everything he's been through has led him to me like God was holding on to him for me because he's truly so perfect for me and I just love him so much already he was trained Jen started his training and she completed his training in 2019 Hey guys, it's uh, Molly from the future. I'm home now and I just want to pop in here because what I explained when I filmed the video is what I knew at the time, but I've learned much more since then. Um, I don't know how much I'm going to share, but um, essentially he was fully graduated and fully trained pre-pandemic. He was given out to a client in 2019. Um, she trained with him for a full month, then she took him home for a month or perhaps even a bit more and then chose to give him back. Um, I don't know. Um, yeah, I, I have many thoughts about that, but it's not my journey. Um, and uh, I'm not gonna share why, um, but the reason that that client chose to give him back is something that is completely insignificant to me as his new handler. So it's just not a big deal at all to me. Um, and then when he was given back, COVID hit. So Mira, of course, like everybody else, had to shut down. And um, they were trying to figure out like how they could still give dogs out to not waste these wonderful dogs. He ended up being placed in a hospice care center for um, terminally ill children. And he lived there for three to four months, but um, was unhappy and he didn't thrive in that position and it just wasn't the job for him it wasn't making the most of his skill set because guiding is the hardest program to graduate from and he's an unbelievably talented guide dog let me just tell you 
And so that just did not make the most of his skill set. And he was unhappy, which is the most important thing. Uh, you don't work a dog if they're not happy. And he loves to guide. He gets so happy. He gets so excited. But he wasn't happy doing the hospice work. And so they did pull him from that program. Um, and the reason they had initially put him in is because he is such a wonderful dog. And due to the fact that he's he was a bit older already um, and they didn't want to waste him but they ended up pulling that dog and are placing a different dog there who will enjoy that job and who will be happy. And it's just a reminder that not all jobs are for all dogs and that that's the importance of selecting the correct program for each dog so that they can thrive. Their skill set is being honored, but also what they want, their own wishes is, are being honored. And so he was brought back and um, they kept him. And when they were opening up back again for clients, they looked at the dogs they had and they knew that he was older than they typically like to give a dog out, but they also knew that he was way too good to let him go. And I'm just so glad. And I feel like all of these like failed attempts to place him really truly was God like pulling him to stay for me. I've gotten an incredible dog because he actually ended up getting double training because when COVID reopened, or when COVID reopened, when, when they were able to reopen the school and they chose to bring him back in, even though he was older, they got him into training again um, to like get him back used to things. And so I'm so lucky, but he's been through a lot. You know, he was born at Mira, went to a foster home, came back to Mira for training, went to a client, came back to Mira, went to a foster home, came back to Mira. And now finally at just over three years old, he is coming to his forever home and I'm so excited that I can give that to him. He is such a loving, sweet, sensitive baby. And every single day that I train with him more and more and every single day that we work together, it just gets better and better. And I cannot believe that I just got him on Tuesday. So yes, our anniversary, our official anniversary is September 14th, although we met September 13th. I can't believe it's been four days because it just feels so natural and it feels so right. And he has all of my favorite qualities of Gypsy and all of my favorite qualities of Gallop in one dog. And okay, I just want to come in here and pop in to talk about comparing dogs because I know that I asked you guys not to compare my dogs and now I'm doing it a lot. I know that the trainers asked us to not and that I'm doing it a lot. So I want to explain that for me and, and for the way the trainers mean it as well is to not negatively compare. So not be like, oh, Gallop's better at this than my new dog, or Gypsy is a cuter, was a cuter looking dog than my new dog. Um, I think it's really healthy and positive to see the good traits that are similar between your old dogs and your new dogs, because it's actually what allows you to bond better with them, but not seeing the negative ways that they're different. I think that's a that's the big one for me and that's what I'm asking of you guys to not be like, oh, I wish she got the cute black and white dog she tried because this dog isn't as cute. Like, I don't want those negative comparisons because that's toxic. But the positive comparisons, seeing how wonderfully similar they are, I think is totally fine and I encourage it. I'm just so excited that he's mine and I just feel like that little blip in the middle with the client who sent him back, um, is because God was like holding him for me and I feel so lucky. So yes, he's been through a lot. And as you heard, the theme for his litter was beer, which is so funny. I feel like it's a good theme for an Irish girl. I feel like uh, if they had one that came out with the orangey burner markings, they should have called him Guinness. That would have been so cute. <laughs> I'm surprised that he's like probably closer to 75 burner. Yeah, could you, you believe that? I mean, he looks like a lab, right? Oh my god, I, do, I get the burner face, you know, and the hair, like... Yeah, no, well, I not the hair, it. it's not long. What was Gallop? 50. Oh, so he's even more. He's more burner than Gallop. Wow. That's oh. what I'm saying, I'm shocked. Yeah. Gallop was true 50-50. His dad was a purebred burner, right. and his mom was a purebred lab. Mm -hmm. But this guy is a St. Pierre and a Labernese cross. Mm. Gypsy was 75% burner. Mm -hmm. And Gypsy was the same size as him, but she had all the full white. Mm -hmm. markings yeah anyways okay you're all wondering what his name is wait before i get into it pause and guess below what you think his name is it's a beer name okay now i'm gonna give you another hint it's a belgium beer okay hint number three it starts with a b and his name is wait i feel sorry you should be in this with me okay 
I'm gonna come on your level. And this big man, this big man is named dun, da, 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 Benny Lux. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sweet baby. Yeah, so his name is Benelux, spelled B-E-N-E-L-U-X. Um, one of the nicknames the trainers gave him is Benny, B-E-N-N-Y, which, you know, is fine. I don't love it. And then Benelux is um, just really long because it's three syllables. So I kind of call him Benelux for the most part during training hours because that's obviously his name that he's been trained with, so he really listens. Um, but what I kind of also call him as a as a nickname and what I'll probably transition to like his full-time name is Benix, which is B-E-N-N-I-X. Um, it's extremely close to Benelux, Benix, Benelux. It's very similar. So it's an easy transition for him and he, he listens to it when I say it. And uh, I just, it's just shorter for me to say Benix than Benelux every single time. So it'll probably be like, if he's not listening to me or if he's in trouble, I'll be like, Benelux. But if he's, you know, if we're just chatting, I'll call him Benix. So this is Benix. Um, for everyone's ease, we just call him Benix in the comments. Yeah, that's his name, Mr. Benix. I'm sure I will have a million nicknames for him as I do for my cat and my previous guide, Gallop. It's like with Gallop, when he was in trouble or not listening, I would say Gallop, which is how they say it with the French accent in training, Gallop. Um, but then when he was listening to me and he was just being good, I'd call him Gallop. But also, I mean, Gallop answered to Goose, Gooseman, Gallop or Gooseman, Goosey Goosey. Like, you know, when you call a dog something enough, they just listen. So Benix is gonna be a really easy name change for him. And Benelux will probably just be reserved for when he's being a real bad boy, which frankly, he never is. So that's that. Um, obviously, this is a super exciting transition for me. I'm having so much fun. Um, and I'm really excited that I've been able to take you guys on this journey with me. So definitely stay tuned because there's so many more training videos to come. Seeing the rest of this journey unfold, his first airplane ride home. Um, meeting Lavender and Gallup. We have lots of exciting content, so make sure that bell notification is hit so you don't miss a single thing over, over here. Um, thank you to all my patrons who have been supporting me over there. It's been awesome having you guys through this whole journey as well. And please, in the comment section below, be nice, be nice. Don't compare him to Gallup. I know I compare him a lot to Gallup, but in a real positive way. I hope you guys can, you know, be nice about his name and everything. Um, I love him so much already, and I'm, uh, he's part of the family, so that's my new buddy. <laughs> All right, um, until next time, you can click over here to check out this video or over here to check out this one. I love you guys so much, and I'll see you next time. Bye! Thank you to CVS for sponsoring this video.